I'm Victor Grant and we're going to be talking today about marketing that works really the quest for the Holy Grail in this image as you can see the Knight of the Round Table is pursuing the Holy Grail and if we just widen your perspective and that's what I'm going to be asking you to do over and over in this workshop today is widening your perspective you can now see that the Grail itself is over a chasm and that as he's crossing the chasm, other knights are falling to their deaths. And you can see that now the, the image contains a lot more information about the, the power of this statement. Whereas when we just looked at this first slide, the rest of it was obscured from view. And that really is why so many people struggle with marketing. But before we get to that, I want to introduce myself to you briefly. I got my start as a talk show host at MSN, the Microsoft Network. I work in SEO. I was a CTO, Chief Technology Officer. Uh, I created software. I have my own search engine called EarthGrid. I recently became a public speaker and an author, and I'm the co-founder of the Digital Engagement Group, along with my partner, Bob Heyman, who invented the term search engine optimization, who's here with us tonight. I've been programming computers since 13, so I have a lot of background. I want to tell you a little bit about my story. My early mentors, actually Robert G. Allen. I was 21 years old, uh, sitting in a bar in La Jolla, California, and this man approached me and he's we had a conversation and then he explained that he was doing a mastermind that weekend and uh, invited me to be his guest everyone else paid like three thousand dollars to be there and i went for free and i sat down next to this man mark victor hansen he hadn't written chip and soup for the soul yet but he and i were both students and we were learning direct response marketing so that was over 30 years ago. After I completed my event in marketing, I really got interested in entrepreneurship and marketing and business and joined a, a group that had a week-long intensive. One of the speakers was Jack Canfield, and that got to meet Jack. And that, again, was before Chicken Soup of the Soul existed. Well, Jack inspired me to work on a proposal and that proposal ended up in the land of this man right here, Bill Gates, who apparently had read my proposal, thought I had some good ideas, and his staff invited me to go to Redmond, Washington. Uh, at that time, I wanted to create a CD-ROM project around, about the life of Buckminster Fuller and republish all of his books in Encarta encyclopedia format. Uh, Microsoft thought it was a great idea, and they put me... They said, why don't you come up here and get some training with us? And so I went up to Redmond, Washington and had training. Uh, we had simultaneously marketing training as well as technology training. Uh, it was interesting. Every morning in the training, uh, Bill would speak at the very, very front and everyone was invited. And then we would split into two camps, the technology track and then the business track. And I kind of wanted to do both, so I actually did both. I uh, went to the technology lectures first, picked up, picked up all the lecture notes, and then ran across campus to the marketing side, which was just getting started. And uh, pretty much spent most 80% of my time in marketing and 20% of my time in technology. Uh, to my knowledge, I was the only person at MSN that did that. <laughs> so. I moved to Hawaii and uh, ran my channel from there. I built .coms, did SEO. Uh, my journey continued. I eventually moved back to California. And I had a startup with this man right here, Dad, Daniel Kotke. He was the unrecognized third founder of Apple Computer. He was the first employee. He actually soldered together the very first Apple computer, the Apple One. And he and I had a a television show uh, together uh, that was uh, broadcast on public access and we had this idea well wouldn't it be cool if we did the show on streaming uh, instead and there was no high definition streaming YouTube at that time was a postage stamp and uh, we just wanted to create our own streaming channel so we went to um, venture capitalists 
and uh, they told us that there was no market for high definition video on the internet. So we wanted to prove them wrong and we got the rights to a feature film called Karma. Uh, it was actually made by two Silicon Valley executives. Uh, it was scripted on a, uh, a Blackberry. <laughs> there were no iPhones at the time. And uh, we uh, took this movie and it was the first high definition film ever on the internet. And that was in 2006, December 31st was the article. And we released broadband video on the internet, and we were the very first ones to do it. And uh, a lot of press got a hold of us, and right around uh, 2007, uh, we really you know, got patents, and we wanted to create high-definition videos on the internet and all these kind of things. And then Vimeo came along. And Vimeo uh, had a really good business model, and uh, venture capitalists said, well, it's going to either be video Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, while I was working with uh, the company called Fast Movie, I went to a number of talks and had a chance to meet this guy, Chad Hurley. Uh, he was the founder of YouTube, one of the founders of YouTube. And we got to hang out a little bit in Beverly Hills. And uh, he was just about to sell it to Google. And you know the rest of the story from there. I took a little bit of time off and then a friend of mine, John, invited me to join the Empower Network. You can see John, um, yeah, John's right there. And uh, my very first day on the Empower Network, I met uh, David Wood uh, at one of the events. Uh, it was actually my very first night, very first day. And uh, always been connected with it. And I also met Robert Probst, who is on the webinar here today and uh, very, very excited to reconnect with old friends. Empower Network was a really great journey. A lot of us were there, uh, immediately went all in uh, as much as we could. And then the, the uh, iPass black card came out and we had all the iPass events. Here's one of the iPass events. Here I am with my friend, Scott Raley. Uh, I think he now does over a million dollars a month in sales just selling on uh, Shopify. So a lot, of, a lot of my friends are really, really successful that grew out of the Empower Network. And one of the things that uh, I developed during the Empower Network was uh, search triggers. Uh, we were blogging every day and I had this idea, well, I needed topics for my blogging. So I wrote a tool that helped me figure it out. So if I wanted to do something about keywords, okay, my tool would tell me that keyword was really too, you know too many words for that keywords had a little bit less google keywords still really competent because comp competitive red light yellow light green light and so the red lights mean it's really really competitive probably don't want to deal with it yellow means yeah if you do quite a bit of work you might rank on it but this thing down here seo competitor analysis software it was green light and it was trending it was it means it were, there were people searching for it in the search engines but there weren't a lot of articles written about it. And so this was really the magic bullet that allowed me to have these results inside of Empower Network. I 100x my blog traffic. I went from 10 visitors a day to over here, over a thousand visitors a day, but I had an octave, I had a leap. I hit like 500 visitors a day right here. And then I sort of dropped down in this and then, then something happened where all of a sudden my blog picked up and I, I, I keep that image as our background for search triggers still to this day, even though in 2012, it just goes to show that the natural laws of cycles of numbers just work out. So I started writing about search and search triggers and things like that. And I got published in this several books uh, by Vicki Winterton. And here I am featured receiving an award for my, my article that got published in Ready, Aim, Inspire. I uh, also got on the cover of Insights Magazine and got to be known uh, out there in the media and started just speaking at that point. Uh, my jur hero's journey uh, continued. I went back to my core, which was EarthGrid Search, my own search engine, refocused on SEO, link building tools, product launches, consulting, uh, got involved with JVZoo uh, and 
released a number of products on JVZoo, and including uh, search triggers. And we did a webinar, and we converted 25% of the people to buying the offer. So I encourage all of you who are watching the webinar today, learn from me. I do know a few things. Okay, uh, I went into my very first SEO class. Uh, I started teaching SEO 101 at local community because I wanted to sort of see, okay, how could I bridge search triggers into the local business B2B space? And so uh, here we are at our local community. And then this man showed up and at the end of my lecture, he says, you know a lot about search. I'd like to help you. And then he identified himself as Bob Heyman, the man himself. Uh, he coined the term search engine optimization in 95 and uh, he was the co-author of five books on digital marketing digital engagement marketing by the numbers and he became my mentor and we worked together on bringing search triggers into business he also was a lawyer and former booking agent for jefferson starship new writers of purple sage and we started working together on bringing search triggers so uh, bob will uh be on the panel here today as we go into this presentation. So uh, our next guest is uh, Peter Wolfing. Uh, Peter Wolfing is a leader in many, many things. He's not your average industry leader. He's a leader who strives change, impact, and contribution to others. He's a Marine. Uh, he's a wonderful friend and mentor. I had the joy of working with him for the past year on helping out with as much as I could with U Economy, a new product that he's been working on. Uh, I was actively involved with his for one of his other companies, which was called uh, Easy One Up. And uh, here's a little bit about Peter. It's pretty amazing, but he's impacted over 2 million people globally and earned over 400 million in commissions. Now, mind you, a lot of this commission went out to the field. So because he's the father of the 100% commission, he, he works on getting small, little, tiny license fees, and the lion's share always goes to the, the field. He's author of multiple books, uh, including co-authoring a book called Will to Win with Brian Tracy. And, and Brian actually worked with me back in 94. Uh, I went to his house in uh, Rancho Santa Fe in San, uh, San Diego. We had a chance to meet, and then he was uh, one of my guests at MSN. And uh, yeah, uh, Peter will be on CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, Live Square TV, all kinds of stuff like that. It's all going to be great. So let's talk about the Holy Grail, okay? I found out that Holy Grail is actually a heavy metal band, or is it also, but the most popular thing, <laughs> interestingly enough, about the Holy Grail is uh, Monty Python. Uh, Monty Python uh, created a, uh, a film called Monty Python and the Holy Grail, aptly named. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't already seen it, it's an amazing, amazing, absolutely probably one of the funniest films of all time. And it's all about context. And saying the context is what search uses and latent semantic indexing, you know, there's it's in another one of my talks, I talk extensively about SEO. That's really the secret today of, of search. But let's go back to the Holy Grail. In medieval legend, it's the copper platter used by Jesus at the Last Supper. And then Joseph Arimathea received Christ's blood at the cross. And Arthurian legends written in the earliest 13th century onward, people would go quest for this because it contained, when you drank it, it, it had the seeds of immortality. And it's basically, it's a thing that's being earnestly pursued or sought after. The prophet has become the Holy Grail is another way of saying it, but let's take a look at another perspective on... I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. You see, if you're very, very stupid, how can you possibly realize that you're very, very stupid. You'd have to be relatively intelligent to realize how stupid you are. There's a, a wonderful bit of research by a guy called David Dunning at Cornell, who's a friend of mine, I'm proud to say, who's pointed out that in order to know how good you are at something requires exactly the same skills 
as it does to be good at that thing in the first place, which means, and this is terribly funny, that if you're absolutely no good at something at all, then you lack exactly the skills that you need to know that you're absolutely no good at it. And this explains not just Hollywood, but almost the entirety of Fox News. <laughs> Okay, so I love that video for a couple of reasons, because it really is the context of today's talk. If you remember, very remember the very first slide I talked about, that when you widen your perspective, okay, I'm going to go back to slide number one, and we're going to repeat that. When you widen your perspective, okay, from this at first, you see there's a man, you assume that he's walking across the, um, you know, walking across almost mesmerized by this grail. But what you don't see is that other nights, the grail is over a canyon and it's, it's unreachable, but he's sort of not paying attention to that. It's almost like magical. He has these magical qualities. So I want you to widen your perspective. Think about it, okay? Now, here's an interesting thing. If you if you think you know a lot about marketing, chances are you probably don't. Um, there's a, a wonderful five-minute video from David Dunning that explains this in, in great, great detail because this is really why I think a lot of marketing doesn't work. So we're going we're gonna to cut to that video. I'm going to Actually, I'm going to stick that video in its entirety uh, because it is copyrighted. We're going to we're going to play that maybe at the end of this broadcast, uh, or we're going to include the link to YouTube so you can watch it. That it's on. It's a TED Talk. It's a very it's it's a it's a, one of these five minute uh, animated films. Really highly recommend you watch it. But the main point here is what what David Dunning found is people who think they're really good at something often are not. And the people who are really good at something, they don't really need to prove it to anyone. So let me put it this way. If, you, if, you're, if you've studied marketing as I have for 30 years, I have the ability to recognize good marketing from bad marketing. Uh, because I've been programming computers since I was 13, and I'm now 51, uh, okay. Uh, in those 40 years, I actually understand more about programming than, than other people do. Even if I can, I can actually program in languages I don't understand by utilizing other programmers who do understand those languages. So the, the point I'm making here is that if you're sitting here and you're watching and say, yeah, I already know a lot of this stuff, I say, you probably don't. So I invite you to really, really pay attention because the, the things we're going to cover today are so fundamental and so important that if you don't understand these fundamental principles, then nothing you do inside of marketing is really going to work in today's marketplace. However, when you do take these principles and you apply them to your business and you find what is your hero's journey, I mean, you want to think about this as you're sitting there watching this video, think about this. What is it that is your hero's journey? How is it that the people who have come into your life have been stepping stones on this journey that you're moving toward. And what is the gift that you have to share with humanity and other fellow human beings that is the uniqueness that you can only you and only you are capable of delivering to folks. So on that note, I'm going to end this segment and we're going to move into the interaction portion in this webinar. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.